And uh, yes, we're attending a special uh, council meeting. I guess it's what we call this. Call the meeting order. It is uh, 11. What's that? I would uh, ask for you to remind the members of any disclosure of pecuniary interest and in general nature thereof. Which brings us to the purpose. We are here for an education and training. And that first up is uh, 3.1 Manager of Economic Development, Tourism, and Strategic Initiatives, Planning for Growth. Good morning. Thank you, Gordon. If you have me, I'm going to speak to the first slide as an introduction, and then I'm going to hand it over to Karen. I will stand corrected and say the second slide. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. So today we have a, an objective of uh, sharing some information that we hope is going to spur some additional conversations amongst your local councils. Uh, at the end of the day, we, we've had some conversations with the local CEO group about the opportunities that we're going to have for growth. Uh, and it spurred a whole bunch of other uh, discussions, you know, how we're going to manage economic development, how we're going to manage planning services, infrastructure investments. Uh, there's quite a long list of things that are going to be potentially impacted. And what we're hoping to do today is to um, share some common information, uh, most of which has been shared with our, uh, our colleagues with the CEO group. Um, but some, some new opportunities as well. We have a major grant opportunity uh, that has to be uh, submitted by 7th of November. Um, for us to take full advantage of that grant and for us to start having some additional uh, plans uh, put into place, we really need some direction from not only county council, but local municipalities as well uh, to understand what you'd like to see in the, the um, taking on some of the opportunities for growth that we have both with our economy and our community. So this is really a chance to spur that discussion um, and we'll look forward to uh, not only some of the discussion today, but also the opportunity to work with each of your respective local councils and your, your staff to uh, to take care of these opportunities. So with that, you uh, I'd like to turn it over to Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, through you, Mr. Warden to Council. Uh, so we're here today to discuss some of, and we can go to the next slide. Uh, we're here today to discuss some of the significant developments that are taking place in this area from the Amazon Fulfillment Center to the Power Co. SE Gigafactory. So we're already seeing an increase in interest in this area and also an increase in uh, land demand in this area. So we'd like to get together and talk about what our plans are for our communities so that we can uh, make the most of these opportunities that are coming our way. Uh, and again, the goal of this session is to help you define the growth that you would like to see in your communities and also to seek your uh, input on what kind of information you need for, from us so that you can make these decisions with your community as well. And can we post it? Thank you. Uh, so the uh, PowerCo SE Gigafactory is more than just a factory, it's a catalyst for economic change. So with its construction, we anticipate that there will be 3,000 highly skilled uh, direct jobs, but there will also be thousands of um, indirect jobs as well. And I think we've heard up to 30,000 jobs, and that can be from construction to industry that uh, supports the Gigafactory to um, expanded retail and other investments in the community. So this influx of jobs will not only uh, intensify competition for skilled labor, but also attract newcomers to our area. So the result is that there will be an increased demand for housing, a diverse job market, and uh, regional impacts that go well beyond our borders as well. Uh, so Elgin County, St. Thomas, London, and beyond will be competing for the ancillary type uh, industrial investments. And whether or not Elgin County lands these investments or not, we will be impacted by this development. Businesses are going to flock to our region, if not Elgin, to St. Thomas, to London, to Woodstock, and uh, skilled labor competition will be intensified. So this influx of jobs will attract a diverse range of uh, people into our communities. And we need to uh, support our existing businesses, assess what our workforce needs are, and invest in the training to make sure that um, our businesses have the skilled workforce that they need. And so there are many things that we need to consider as we plan for this growth. So 
uh, among the considerations for careful land use planning. So balancing the demands of housing, business, whether industrial or commercial, agriculture, and recreational areas. Financial planning. So how can we make the necessary investments to attract growth uh, and infrastructure upgrades, ensuring that our utilities can accommodate the population and business growth? Housing affordability and supply, making sure housing remains within reach for every for all our residents. Transportation needs, uh, so enhancing our transportation networks to keep people moving, and also education, healthcare, safety, and recreation. And I'm sure we could list many other things as well that we do need to consider, but these are some of the things that um, we will need to start planning for. So we need to make sure we can provide the uh, essential services and amenities to all staff or to all um, residents of Elvetic. Next slide. So it's vital that we align these developments with our community priorities. Preparing to welcome newcomers and immigrants is key to uh, making sure that our communities are safe and inclusive places where all residents thrive. So this is something that we do need to prepare for and engage our communities uh, with, is to make sure that we welcome everyone who comes into this area um, with all the growth that um, will be happening. And growth also offers uh, many benefits. Uh, so among those are increased tax revenue, job creation, economic stimulation, and improved infrastructure and public services. So an increase in industrial tax revenue can also support the increase in service levels required by population growth. Growth can enhance your property values, diversify the job market, and make uh, your municipalities more attractive to investors and businesses. Additionally, growth fosters community vibrancy, cultural diversity, and long-term sustainability. However, we must uh, carefully manage the growth to balance these benefits with potential challenges like traffic congestion and strains on public services. So sustainable and well-planned growth is essential to ensure that the advantages of growth continue to outweigh any of the trials. So we need to understand the type and level of growth desired and the investment needed to make it happen so we can develop and implement a plan to get where we want to go. Uh, so do we want to attract and grow industry related to the electric vehicle supply chains? And what kinds of incentives will be needed to attract these investments? For example, our current community improvement includes a tax increment equivalent grant for major projects. So this grant uh, is intended to stimulate investment by deferring part of the property or increase in property taxation as the result of major development. So essentially businesses who wish to expand or build could receive a grant that is equivalent uh, of up to 100% of the municipal and or county portion of the tax increase for a period of five years. So uh, do we need these types of uh, incentives or is the proximity to the power pro SE sufficient incentive um, or do we need to think about additional incentives? With the property tax increment equivalent grant, we um, are allowed to offer up to 10 years of that um, refund or rebate of the increase in taxation. So we would like to start the conversation today by asking a few questions that touch on key aspects of growth and development. You may be ready to answer some of these questions today, and you may need more information. So if that is the case, please let us know what information you would like so that uh, we can uh, bring that forward to you uh, in the future. Uh, yeah. So with that, um, perhaps we can start with uh, discussing what the appetite in your community is to welcome investment, how aggressive you, aggressively you'd like to pursue growth. Uh, and uh, if you're prepared to uh, welcome newcomers into your communities as well. Well, I'll start off. I would think uh, overall the, uh, the answer is yes, but we have constraints in front of us in terms of infrastructure availability and uh, what the capacity of it. So if we're to think about uh, large developments in our region, Strength on what we can grow under our current capacity. So, we're going to need some investments or to make investments into uh, water, stormwater, wastewater, roads, and work for that. So, and I think it's probably 
uniform across the entire county. These are some of the things that we're going to do. I know we cannot do it all. Grant, please. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Yes, I would agree. Uh, obviously, uh, infrastructure is going to be the biggest challenge uh, for all of us. Um, from the cell phone plans, uh, obviously, we've uh, put some major commitments already so, to uh, residential growth. Uh, we are overcoming most of those challenges. Uh, we do uh, all right. We will need to expand our uh, sewer service and probably uh, now we have this program with you. And, and so that's the next step. Uh, where we go from there. Um, obviously, I think the industry plan becomes serious interest in what the cars are saying. And industry need to go into servicing extremely plans for the Thank you, Mr. Gordon. No, I've been working on those for a number of years. We've got a lot of problems. Paul's very the more information we get on that, the better. And that media becomes questioning the other area of the safety and the importance of the transportation. Yes, Mike, please. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, Thank you, Carolyn, for your, your report and presentation, and thank you, Don. I think this is the forum we need to have. It's a regional <laughs> show. If I can talk about that money a little bit, um, we are growing, but we're growing with residential growth. Uh, we're limited in our industrial lands. We have very limited amounts of that, and it's not shovel ready. So. Uh, what we can bring to a regional approach is housing. But as Deputy Gordon stated, we need help in this infrastructure, correct capacity on our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, there's no way that we can finance that thing on our own. Looking for government government to get involved, and we talked to them a number of times, and the assurance really isn't there. So I think we're all at least for the same thing. Thank you. Yes, Mark, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Warren. Certainly, I agree with Mike. We're now like that is safe and straight. Um, both residential lot because of the service and funds, also residential land because they don't go on land out of production, but um, doesn't sound like the government is too promising at that point. Is that what really you believe, Mike? I don't know what to believe. You know, <laughs> we've had numerous delegations, and they've, they've seen the script the duck done numerous times. Uh, we offered to help the provincial government with their 1.5 million homes that they're going to do in 10 years, and we're going to do our part. But we've got some major hurdles to get over to do that, and it's infrastructure funding. And I don't know in the past we've had shown federal provincial um, programs. I'm not getting good advice on that at this time, so it's going to see. Thank you. Need some more reassurance. We need to talk about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Ward. Um, a couple of things. So I think in our case, it would be important to frame the situation as what happens when wealth pursues you, as opposed to, you know, being in a, perhaps another area of the province and, and where we have to be really proactive to attract businesses. And so I think our, we need to acknowledge that the situation was changed. And I would say that growth is pursuing us aggressively. 
And therefore, the question for us is then, so how do we want to manage proactively that flow? Um, another question I want to make sure remains on the table is how we protect our farming heritage and land. And um, by the same token, protect existing businesses. And so that right, those questions need to be explored. And one of the top priority for uh, the township is to, to find that balance. Uh, yes, we want to grow, but we want to manage that growth. And ultimately, our rural and uh, farming heritage is of uh, most importance. And the other question that was there was about um, how do we ensure that our community is well? And I think our community would be welcoming if everybody sees themselves in this change. So this area will transform. I think that's a given now. Um, if you do a good job, we'll manage that transformation. And in managing that transformation, we need to pay attention to um, you know, our existing residents, our existing businesses, the diversity of um, our existing communities and engage so like i said so everybody sees that what is happening like everybody it will be positive for everybody because otherwise if you start creating a divide like the before and the after then um, that's when we will start seeing some barriers and not welcoming new businesses not welcoming new families and, and residents so we must keep an eye on that it has to be something beneficial for everybody Thank you, Ms. Lloyd. Um, the, the, the purpose of this meeting is to kind of look at how the county can help um, all of us together in terms of the land infrastructure and terms of growth. And one of the things that should be on the table, I think, is uh, how, do we, how, do, how do we develop a mechanism to be fair in terms of how we use county resources for our communities. Because we're a certain point, we're all different stages of our growth. So I'm just concerned that we have some kind of way of, of making sure that we're all at the table equally. Yeah, thank you for that observation. Obviously, yes, I'm just going to be further down the road than others. Uh, I think uh, at the very uh, initial stages of the conversation, I think what's sufficient for the term does anyone not? This payments to do this or uh, communities out there that want to maintain their, uh, you know, they just throw it out there, their pastoral settings are uh, maintaining a spent on the based economy, and, and that's it. And they don't want any growth. I'm not, I'm not sensing that from discussion around the table. I think there's an appetite for growth, but recognition that we got to have a lot of money. We're going to do this. And if, uh, it's a borrowed the phrase. Being pursued by growth, then uh, the timeline is shorter than you think. So, this is what we're trying to determine. Can we do this uh, strategically as a group? Move forward. Yeah, please. Thank you, Ms. Uh, yes, and I think uh, if we work together on this, I think we can do a whole lot better job of working individually. Uh, obviously, uh, I think we're. If everyone succeeds, everybody succeeds, and somehow we're going to make that work well, make us on that if there's some financial answers from the county, whatever that happens to be. Uh, to put price to residential there and my uh, council as well, showing uh, our new uh, support plan identifier said we need to put a little plan on it. Uh, and uh, I think we need to get a little tougher of a fair uh, official plans and how we uh, interpret um, affordable housing. Um, and I know uh, personally, from my perspective, uh, the transformation of, of uh, the population needs to happen in order to all the homes that we're seeing in the dollar bill now aren't sustainable. Um, Especially for the cost of tourism, a fair amount should be for a bad proxy. So, some 
some sort of abundant, abundant structures. There's there there are beautiful ones out there. There's not just a block and not be blocked around the store building out anymore. So I think uh, we all have to be a little more concerned about what's being built uh, or as far as residential is built. Well, I can play in the back. Uh, but I would agree with you. It's uh, how do you incentivize a uh, uh, form to come here? You want to do our own piece. Uh, we know right now that we're very much in need of do. And we're relying on perhaps the, uh, the larger developments to help encourage sort of that and the cost of the land they might go in. And I know it's some petty or really small, but that's that's what we get on them to bring in more affordable uh, multi guys or whatever have you to the table. We need to find a better manager, whether it is like, how do you do that? This is what it is. But I certainly appreciate the time. This is just getting it. Uh, so we are exploring, and I think we've got, we have in the past, to some extent, uh, spoke to one box service. Those who are developing developers to give the cash up front to help them reduce some of the developments so that we put in the services on the And we also saw that everybody does the same thing with the open plane, one of those values we have. Well, since you really assisted the plan with the board of development. Thank you, Warden. Uh, just a couple of thoughts. Um, going back to something that Councillor Jaguar raised a few minutes ago about try, trying to make everybody feel like they're um, they're benefiting from some of the growth. I think is a an important point. In, in addition to looking at attracting new growth, um, one of the things that Carolyn uh, and the team have been working on is a, a strategy for business retention and expansion. So. It's often, you know, we see the Volkswagen plant or somebody coming in power code and, you know, we're attracting a new business. That's only probably 20% or less of the, the total benefits. If we can actually uh, present the growth opportunity as a way for our local businesses to also build their capacity and growth, that's the type of benefit that gets shared very quickly. And I think it makes things a lot more welcoming. So uh, kudos to Carol and her team. We're already starting to put some of those plans together. And they will be wanting to reach out to each of you and also your, um, your local staff to find um, create an opportunity as to how we get out to the businesses in the practice. So I think that's really critical. Um, I've heard almost everybody around the table uh, talk about the need for infrastructure investments. And just to try and clarify, I've heard the biggest single issue is water and wastewater, either water uh, supply lines or water treatment. So if it's something different than that, I think that's important because we're, I'm expecting we're not going to get all the money we want to all the things that we want. But if we have to go together and ask for a single piece, if we knew that water and wastewater is a is a critical uh, piece, that's helpful when we go to see the levels of government. So let me just stop there and put the point. Thanks. Anyone else around the table? Um, Back of the room, we have the high price help. Uh, maybe uh, they yeah. have some comments yeah. they'd like to share with us uh, as well. Don't be shy. Yeah, please don't be shy. Step forward, Dan. Uh, I can. I can maybe start it off uh, for my Annie Grizel uh, from the, the town of Elmer, and hopefully other people will follow me. Uh, certainly, I appreciate that the county undertaking this uh, work. Um, I think there's a lot of factors. One of the things that we consider when we're thinking about infrastructure is uh, the geography of Elgin County. Um, a lot of uh, the distances involved don't really allow uh, shared services from uh, multiple municipalities. Uh, I guess the exception to that is the, the secondary water lines, which are a huge success, but uh, the distances involved for a lot of the pipelines are really prohibitive uh, in terms of cost. Um, the one thing that too, I think we perhaps county council may wanna consider when you're thinking about next steps is the value of uh, maybe bringing on a director of planning uh, at the county level. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainties known in terms of what the next policy kind of approach will be for the county. Uh, certainly a lot of the OP process that's going on now 
uh, includes a lot of the historic provisions uh, that have been kind of allotted to lower tier municipalities, which involves a lot of uh, farm severances uh, that aren't genuinely common in a lot of other county systems. So uh, to speak to uh, Councillor Jaguar's uh, point uh, there, maintaining the the rural nature of this community will become important in identifying areas of intensification and growth will also become important. But just having somebody on staff who can have those discussions and build that kind of understanding with lower tier partners on what areas will be growth areas, what areas will be uh, preserved uh, to prevent large losses of farmland would be uh, particularly beneficial. And, and also understanding uh, certainly that uh, some areas that have the residential growth that is happening, happening largely through uh, farm severances might be adversely impacted as we go forward. So uh, just determining an overall vision of what the county's uh, position on growth might be would be great to have somebody in house. Uh, but certainly it's great to see this uh, meeting hosted and everybody considering uh, the impacts to our community. And uh, from Elmer's perspective, the one thing that we do want to avoid is losing the momentum that we've currently built there. We're, we're, we're ticking along really quickly and we have very quick response times. So we want to work with the county, but we also don't want our, our businesses when they're coming to us or our builders when they're coming to us being delayed whatsoever. We, we really appreciate our ability to fast track our work as we're being provided right now. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I can continue with the presentation. Please. Wait till that slide is back up. So we've already talked about some of the things on the, the next slide. So growth also involves costs to different levels of government and across the public and private sector. And here are just three examples of some of the costs that are involved with growth. So we've talked about how the municipal costs of again water, wastewater, planning, roads, cultural services, parks, and recreation. So again, more residents do we need to increase uh, some of our um, other services as well, uh, whether they're libraries or parks, uh, recreational spaces, and things like that. Uh, school boards will also have um, costs that are associated with growth from, from planning for and building these schools and recruiting staff uh, for these new schools as well. Uh, and then again, there are uh, costs to the private sector for uh, building that housing, the commercial development and the industrial development as well. And to attract growth um, and to not just attract it, but to work with those investors who want to come to Elgin County. Um, there are some economic development expenses as well as we work with those uh, businesses and as we also work on other initiatives uh, like workforce development initiatives. So again, the key thing here is effective financial planning to make sure that this growth is sustainable. And uh, on the next slide, we're looking at some funding sources that are available for uh, or to support growth. So funding sources vary from, uh, so we'll need it for infrastructure uh, and these sources uh, can be property taxes, grants, debentures, uh, development charges and users fees. So these are some of the tools that municipalities have uh, to get, to get uh, the funding necessary for infrastructure improvements. But there are also other options from partnerships with other municipalities to public private partnerships and regional initiatives. Uh, and we'd be happy to provide more information on public-private partnerships that may be a possibility to us. And then also a question is, what expectations should we have regarding financial support from the provincial and federal government? So is there any support that will be coming from them for this? And if we go on to the next slide, uh, we do have some discussion questions here as well. Uh, so how much um, are you willing, or not just willing, how much can you um, uh, invest to uh, support the growth? And where do you see opportunities for collaboration? Uh, and when might collaboration not um, be in our best interest or, or work for everyone? And when it comes to infrastructure, is it feasible for us to make shared investments in key areas like water, wastewater, uh, et cetera? And I know we've talked about some of this already, but if you'd like to weigh in on it again, that um, yeah, would be a great well, 
Um, again, Lord, I will speak with God, but I'm not necessarily going to have a lot of today. But I'm certainly going to come home and take back home the uh, second round of reporting. I think uh, during the uh, last few last period, during the this, the two of them, the beneficial the hall as a member of the laws of the general weapons, Mr. Ward, I think it's important that we recognize the businesses that we do have in the community right now, and we find ways to support these businesses that have um, really had some struggles coming out of COVID. That is is really important, and um, be cognizant of the the fact that we often create different levels of bureaucracy that become barriers for these businesses going forward, and. Uh, as we're attracting, like we, we make it a goal to attract more businesses. Um, let's uh, let's remember the cell phone industry where they're constantly trying to attract new customers and not doing things for the customers they have. Let's really look at ways to support the businesses we currently have because we have some great businesses in this community. Thank you. One thought that just came to mind, uh, we're talking about funding sources. Would we be in a better position to speak at the county level rather than seven lower tiers, uh, having a delegation of AMO and every year asking for the same thing? I'm just wondering if there's some synergies there or some extra, maybe they'd listen better, just throwing that out there. I have a comment on that, but I think Bob has one first. Quick answer is yes. Um, in fact, the, if we're approaching our um, senior levels of government, what they really love to hear is a region. And they'd love to hear all of Southwestern Ontario say, and this is what we need, you know, get, get behind. So I, I think there needs to be some exploration with their MPP <laughs> and also our MP and looking at, you know, what's available. But if we can consolidate what our ask is, it's a whole lot easier for them to respond to one larger ask for something like water, wastewater treatment versus having you know, seven or eight different asks and having it's, it's just they, there's not that much money to go around. I'm sure they will say, we've already made a pretty significant investment in your community and you want more. So how do, how do we find a way to support what they've already invested in that they want to be successful? I think that's another uh, way to approach it. Thank you. I would, I would also agree with uh, your comments on, and thinking back to my uh, policy research days, often if we were going into the last week, I'm sure it would be better to have five or six more uh, organizations on the side with you rather than just uh, going their own. So, whether it's uh, a county led or a county collaborative with our municipal partners. And why not even think a little broader than that? We are part of that region, part of the score region. It uh, gives us four additional partners out there, four additional partners that might be benefit, uh, benefiting from the investment in this region. So that's one that's the too small. I will go on even and then. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, yeah, just to reiterate some of the points. Um, absolutely, infrastructure support from the province is expected because again, this growth will pursue an upgrade brought to us by the province. So there has to be that, that give and take. Um, but as part of the strategic planning process for now, we did it quite a lot. And uh, it was very, very explicit that it was not veiled or <laughs> any kind of way that a uh, regional approach uh, is expected. And by regional, it, it, what was communicated was how it's not just having a name, that we would agree to that we would be successful in. 
seeking support and getting support for infrastructure works and uh, yes looking at challenges or geographical challenges perhaps but it is the expectation the expectation is to also get past the past and uh, history old old history maybe some baggage maybe some grudges i don't know that may have um held back some uh, regional collaboration and um, that's what we've been asked to come with with you know a fresh mind a collaborative mind a regional mind and that was uh, that message was conveyed to us very clearly by now only associate minister so I think we're gonna we expect it to be by now. Uh, speaking more to the St. Thomas development as well as this uh, where we're currently there's lens on the on the St. Thomas in this area. I'm not going to say that the premier and the prime minister didn't know where they were a year ago, but we sure know a lot more about them today. They tell us there's going to be regional benefit. But what does regional benefit look like? Regional fund. Is it going to be a negotiation with the board and we'll have with the city of St. Thomas, who I think in this uh, scenario, the victor and the majority of spoils um, is the opportunity for uh, one negotiation box with the city of St. Thomas through your, through your process. The solicitation of Ms. Dill said, okay, well, here's what's happened to the county. Councilor um, brings up this morning uh, that you know, crap is an issue with that all these issues. But back to the actual regional benefit, how do we define that? Right? You have a federal provincial government that are giving tens of billions of dollars. I don't know how much of it would be necessarily from the Fed, but from the province, but we, I think, are in an opportune situation to ask for some sort of regional fund, either for management of projects like this to work on the work being done, like you see this morning. But I think the time frame this is, is in the short term because we have the eyes of the Important government folks. To your point, Mike, I think it's important to have a uh, group together as we are today. It's not all about the woman's time that we're going to be larger. I wonder about on a focus related to Elvin because we are the home community for the new plan and for, for Amazon as well. So, the really question is that you know, if there's going to be regional about and how do we go about assessing? And understanding what the province can do in the cities and towns who have made part of the as well and, and made the part of uh, the economies of our nation, make it as part of the facilitation process. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yes, Grant, please. Yeah, just to further uh, Councilor Forum's comments, uh, the, uh, just the proverbial carrots from Bangor right there. But, uh, well, staff, uh, you don't know, right? Uh, before somebody actually comes forward and says, This is what it is. Some of us have made decisions before carriers have to review. Um, regional groups are great, um, logistics and cost are different children. Just out of curiosity, do you know what families in the Toyota go out of when they got out of the water? Is there a lot of incentive picking them, or is there something you can maybe just get an idea of what might be available? I don't know. Thank you. We would be happy to look into what incentives were offered to the CAMIs and other uh, previous um, investments in, in the province and so on. Don, please. Um, when we're talking about all the investments or things that are clearly needed, 
but then the question becomes who pays. Uh, the other people that we haven't talked about much this morning is some of the private sector investments that could be considered as well. So uh, that would extend to me to the utilities like Hydro One, you know, what are their plans and how much is going to be invested? And the critical importance is when is it going to be invested? Um, there were a number of people um, on both the, the local councils and, and county council that heard a presentation during the AMO. I know Councillor Stone was at the table that I was at. And, um, there's a group of people that are, they have a different investment strategy. Um, I didn't get enough out of that lunch and presentation to say whether that's a great thing or whether there's something there that's worth, uh, you know, passing by, but I'd like to have that group come back in and talk. But I, I think my point is, I think we have to explore a number of different investments and whether that's our, you know, taking out the ventures and loans or whether it's getting senior government support or looking at some other private sector investments because the timing for all those things might necessitate as Deputy Wardens talked about, might require us to move slower or faster, if you know, depending on what our expected needs are. So, one of the things I would like some direction from Council or uh, nodding of the heads is whether we can set up some of those additional uh, presentations to look at other types of investment opportunities to help support uh, our growth um, for models for investment. And, uh, uh, I'm hearing some slow nodding to the heads, but I just um, is that the line? I, I, we don't like the governments to sprinkle money on us, but uh, I think we we got to pursue those as well. Yes, yeah. 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 just to, to reinforce it, if there's a negotiation going between St. Thomas and Elk County, and you know, we've lost our own people, whatever. Do you not think that there's a possibility of some funding on being part of the agreement? What we're trying to achieve today, at least in its infancy, to help it to help it perform. Do you think that's a consideration? Yeah. Um, candidly, I haven't been at the table to find out. I I know we've talked about you know what we want and what we think is fair, uh, but really we haven't been invited to the table yet to have any any indication. So I, I think that's definitely something we have to pursue. I, I couldn't agree more that uh, and we try and push for some sort of a development fund, if you will, or some sort of a um, financial uh, compensation for the uh, county for what was lost, but how much, when, all those things, I, I can't pretend to, to share that with council. Nick, do you have something to offer? Or <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I was going to offer the, the risk of, uh, you know, I didn't practice this with Don in advance, so I'm sure he's concerned. So I was actually, I was going to be building something that Councillor Richard Gare said uh, earlier, just in terms of making everyone feel included. Uh, and as the discussion has gone on, there's a lot of municipal professionals in the room and uh, very experienced municipal councillors is um, just the, uh, how to communicate these ideas to your community, because the big picture stuff that we're talking about, uh, I think is fairly easy to grasp. People understand what infrastructure is, the best is necessary to build it, but how do you get to paying for it um, and what kind of collaboration versus competition there is between municipalities gets to a level of municipal vocabulary where it can end up talking past people. So, so you get into what it means to have industrial tax ratios versus residential tax ratios, what it means that if you give people community improvement program tax relief, that the residential sector can theoretically end up subsidizing that. So for a greater return down the line. And, and I guess I would encourage council at the local level and at this level to make sure we're communicating in a way that uh, the public understands if we're looking for their feedback but because it, it does require an understanding of the municipal minutia that just isn't obvious. So uh, I just wanted to, to mention that in terms of making the public feel included in this process. That's all. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councilor you. So we can go on to some of the plans that we have to support our existing businesses. Uh, so as uh, we mentioned, growth presents opportunities and challenges uh, for our existing businesses. For example, they may have opportunities to supply uh, some of the new development 
for example, Power Co. SE with materials, but there may also be competition for employees. So these are just uh, two examples of what their opportunities and challenges might be. Uh, so we are developing, uh, in partnership with our local municipalities, a business retention and expansion program that will support existing businesses. The goal of this program is to better understand our local business challenges and opportunities through business visits and confidential interviews. So Elgin County Economic Development staff will be visiting uh, local businesses throughout our seven uh, local municipalities in the coming months uh, and have conversations with them about what their challenges and opportunities are and what their concerns are with all the growth that is happening in this area. And this uh, project or initiative will be led by a leadership team, which will be comprised of representatives from each local municipality. Uh, and uh, they'll be informing the questions that we're asking and the kinds of conversations we'll be having. And we'll also invite uh, our local municipalities to join us on these business uh, visits as well. Uh, following these business visits, uh, the leadership team will be getting together to review the data that was collected and to come up with an action plan on how we can best support our business community. And this action plan will be presented to the council as well as to our local municipalities for their feedback and support as well. So this is uh, what our plan is for the remainder of this year and starting 2024 as well. What kind of plan do we need to develop to support our existing businesses? And if we move on to the next slide, uh, we can look at uh, a grant opportunity that we are interested in pursuing. And this is to create an investment attraction roadmap. So FedDev uh, currently has a grant open that could support us in developing and in implementing an attraction strategy. So our goal is to work with our local municipalities to position Elgin County as a hub for manufacturing of electric vehicles to foster investment and to stimulate business growth. And just to talk about business growth, this does not just mean attracting new businesses. There may be ways to support existing businesses to grow, to support um, the developments in this area as well. So this project includes um, clarifying our goals with our lower tier municipalities. So again, working together with um, our local municipalities, what do we want to achieve? What do we want to accomplish? Updating our vacant land inventory. So what lands do we have available? Completing a master servicing study so that we have a clear understanding of what servicing is available and what uh, still, uh, what is missing. So uh, when we identify parcels that we would like to market for development, uh, what are the servicing gaps? And this uh, master servicing study would let us know what those gaps are and also provide recommendations and options for servicing those parcels. Uh, and then once we develop this work, we'll work on updating our incentives. So what type of incentives do we need to offer? Um, and again, do we need to offer incentives? If we do, what type? Uh, and then streamlining our planning processes. And Don will be speaking about this a little bit more later, uh, but again, making sure that we all work together on this and then developing a workforce attraction and retention plan as we're planning for this growth, how can we make sure we have the workforce to support it? And then uh, creating a marketing and lead generation strategy. So going out to um, businesses that are interested in locating in Elgin County, um, marketing Elgin County is a great place to uh, live, work and play. So this is uh, an application I've been working with VETF on and also with the localities. And um, if we go to the next slide, we can see what the next steps are, which includes your feedback on whether or not you'd like to pursue uh, this application. So in terms of timeframes, uh, it's essential to start thinking about answers and action plans and to facilitate that. Is there any more information that we can provide uh, to you to help with the decision-making process. Uh, regarding the FedDev application, would you like more details and reports to council that would outline what that would involve? Uh, and then what process or framework should we employ to determine the desired level of growth? For example, would you like a series of facilitated conversations in each municipality or cross municipalities? How do those conversations, what do those conversations look like? And are there any other conversations you'd like to have at the county level uh, around planning for growth? For example, would you like more information on development charges and how they could be used to support potential plans? Uh, and with that, um, I would ask what um, 
I guess those are a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, so we'll leave it at that. Start things off going, uh, in, I guess, to have a uh, system consultation. If you have I facilitated this first discussion from all the way with Mr. Carter, so uh, Discussion. I don't know if I think that's a good idea. I know it sounds like it slows the bus down, but I don't think so. We're here getting the system or at least uh, asking the right questions for every, every member of the local department. Thank you, Mr. Ward. I'm, I'm wondering if right from the get go, we shouldn't try to model the more regional approach and, and break the silos and help facilitate the discussion. We have them, don't we? Um, but you know, I had individual roles, so I think we need to hear each other more, hear from other means of audience and try to see how much more we are in different stages. And, um, yeah, it will keep doing this same thing the same way that we, we won't achieve the this moment of value of the project. We're using our revenue data that would be nice to get. It would be good to do I agree with you. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to get at is the freedom of all, get all the council around it and give it one time. But uh, if we were to, are you suggesting that we go as our the mayors and deputy mayors and full on the council board? Bring in some kind of systems that uh, say, for example, we can really want to see these are your questions, and then we can bring the group back together and get the answers. But I, I agree, we need to attack this from a uh, regional perspective. Yeah, I, I don't have any uh, off the top of my head like specific design um, ideas, but I, I think with technology now, like to, to maybe not overthink that sometimes we've done and shown things on. Just in the logistics, we're hugely involved, and we need a big hall, and we need everybody in the for three months in advance. I think we can be a little bit more fluid and say, Here's a sense of kind of like we did today, that was not a uh, long daytime. We say, Next week, 11 o'clock, be there in person or whatever. So, I think to show that kind of agility would also a, allow that regional approach, but also show this is what we're expecting. Other to do to include agile people often as opposed to you know as you know discussions as big events. The media yeah, or the media that we use, I think, is fine. I, I'm more comfortable for the media events, but fine. I guess what I was trying to get at gathering just for the sake of gathering with them and back go back there and work at our own local level and move forward. Yeah, we need to approach this from our uh so just I'd like to get a little bit of clarity from from the group as to whether you would expect that that would include both engaging local council members but also the communities uh, because I you know we've talked today about how important it is to support local businesses and how important it is to you know make sure everybody's sort of feeling this is a benefit so I I would suggest that you know on the same uh, theme that Councillor Jaguar and, and the warden were talking about that we could be polling or you know providing some information and education to our community, but also inviting them to participate, whether it's a focus group or an online survey or something along those lines, just to help people uh, understand what we're proposing and try and get their feedback as to what they'd like to see happen in their own, own communities. Wow. In addition to councils, I guess that was my my piece. Uh, yeah, we want to be careful because actually my first comment I was going to say about this section is just how pleased I am to hear about the business visits. If we have to stop asking businesses, they're busy, they're working 24-7 trying to run, you know, multi-million dollar farm operation, and we're asking them to come to a town hall, to come to a town meeting. So um, I've been advocating for that business facilitator model for a while, and so this is 
the music to my ear. We need to go see them on their time, on their site. We can actually see, ask them questions and not send them a survey or not invite them to a meeting. I'm not saying that don't invite them, but not make that our core. So we can do our job of yeah, going out there, gathering the information, and then this group can uh, debrief in that uh, regional level. So what did we hear? And I think that approach too um, supports what Nick was suggesting in terms of um, when we go out there, we can also use that opportunity to convey the very tangible benefits in an, in an accessible language and the concrete impact on each of the businesses. So it's a win-win-win all around. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That was I give you what you need currently on our board. Uh, we would be happy to provide a few options at the next council meeting for uh, council engagement and yeah. then um, you can make a decision for me. I think that's a good idea. Okay, is there anything else to turn? Uh, my presentation is complete, unless you have any other questions, but Don does have um, a presentation. I look forward for that. Uh, are there any questions for Carolyn from the gallery? Of course, you know how to get a hold of Carolyn a lot easier than you do. But keep the dialogue open. I would encourage that. Okay. Thank you. Or yours, sir. Thank you, Warden. Uh, a relatively short presentation just to, to start getting some feedback from Council. I'll share with you that um, what precipitated this to come to the agenda is uh, some comments from some of our local uh, CAOs. Uh, there's a number of us that have shared a common challenge to both uh, recruit and retain plan planning staff. Um, that's been a big challenge for a lot of us, uh, including the county. Um, this is in no way a reflection of our existing planners. I mean, no one's coming up and saying, we're not doing what we need to do. What people are saying is planning is extraordinarily important. And as we go into this opportunity for growth, it's become even more important. And so some of the things we've talked about does require some coordination that requires some joint planning, like the official plan to be reviewed. Um, Right now, given the challenges we've had, we thought let's explore some other options. So it was actually Malahide's uh, former CAO that had raised this at one of our recent meetings. And the request was, can we review some other planning models that we might be able to uh, go to school on and help inform some of our decision making over the course of the next uh, uh, several months? Um, in presenting this, I also realized I was going to run out of runway in terms of my time as interim CAO. So this is something that will be handed over to County Council and the next CAO with some, uh, uh, I think, some comments and support from our local CAOs as well. So what I was asked to do is to review uh, three models of uh, County, Oxford, Middlesex, and Huron counties. All of them have an excellent reputation for uh, coordinated planning. Uh, we also consulted with Paul Hicks, our acting manager of planning services. He's worked with a number of different groups as well, and uh, he's provided his thoughts. Uh, and just a kudos to Mr. Hicks. He has uh, basically said, I'm here as long as you want me. I don't want a long-term forever contract. That's not what I'm here for, but I'm not going to leave in alerts. I'll stay with you and support you as long as needed. But really what you want to move to is a more permanent approach to planning. So I couldn't uh, have been more thankful to Mr. Hicks and his response. Next slide, please. So, uh, but I'm going to be looking at just a, a couple of things that are um, required. Right now, our, uh, our options for planning services, we need this expected growth. We need to be able to get on, on top of that. Um, this has been something that we've shared. I've, I've basically gone over some of these elements. And uh, the key consideration is where do we want to see consolidation of planning services? And where do you still need to have local planning services? 
and each year local municipality. In fact, there's a split there as so they do provide slightly different functions. But you know, where's the uh, where's the extra juice that we can be squeezing out of this thing if we're doing some things on a more collaborative uh, effort? Next slide, please. So here's the common elements. All three of these counties provided. Um, all of them have consolidated with planning staff at the county level. They become county employees. So the key to making this work for each of them is that the planning staff are then assigned to local municipalities. So as an example, if we had a huge nine growth happening in South Wolf because of the industrial land developments or you know the residential growth that we might expect in other local municipalities, you might need two or three planners to focus on your local municipalities' work. In contrast, we might have less development happening in West Elgin or Dutton Dunwich, and we might be able to have one staff person sharing the road. And so making good use of their time. We could be fully engaged, but we're not looking at two or three different staff. Each of those counties had the same model, and each of them said that's really the way to make it work. But the planning staff are actually locating their offices at least a few days a week in the local municipalities to get to know your team and your county, uh, county uh, elected officials so that they can actually provide you with the support you need. Next slide, please. Um, It's not 100% in the local counties. All of them have some focus on some sort of shared workspace. So uh, just to share with people, I don't feel like thinking that there's going to be 100% staff always there. Uh, many of the planning uh, staff that have been difficult to recruit and retain, some of them were looking for work from home options. Uh, some of them were looking for opportunities to, to move around to different communities throughout their you know, tenure with the, the county so that they could build their levels of experience. So I'll just I'll walk through one scenario that was common, but they would often try and reach out to you know, the schools that were providing planning services. They'd recruit directly from the schools. They'd bring in the junior planners. They'd have those folks that were mentored by the senior planners and given an opportunity to have them a variety of shared experiences. Um, you know, we don't want to have somebody coming in and they're going to work for five years and all they're going to do is uh, harm severances, right? That, that doesn't help them develop with planners. So we want to make sure that they're getting some additional opportunities. Um, and in all cases, the county level is covering the tops of those races. Next slide, please. So starting to get into this, they're locating the built capacity, uh, supporting uh, the planning services for the staff, would have an affiliation with the IMP. So they don't have the same planners. Uh, in some cases, Sharon County is a good example where the planning authorities that we have at the county level, and you know, seem come to this room, um, those are delegated to the local planners, and the same person can do both elements of the planning service. It can very much like a single tier, and it also starts to speak to some of the things Danny talked about earlier, was making sure your planning approvals are as fast as possible and you're providing optimum support to the businesses. For the residents as they're developers on the road in their business. Um, the other piece that I think is important is we have some good planners right now, but most of our planners are probably already fully tasked in doing day to day planning activities. And that's only uh, arbitrary figure 50% of all of the stuff you want to do on planning. I will the next slide, I'll make it a little bit clearer. But here, here's some things that you might be looking at in a different student. In addition to things like severances, we have to go through things like official plan reviews. There's statutory duties that we have for secondary plans, for zoning, for site plan improvements. A lot of those additional um, services, there's often not the time for. If you have one plan, if everybody wants to have some autonomy, but if you have one plan, they don't have the opportunity to, to uh, collaborate with each other, to have shared experiences, and to get some mentoring done. So having some consolidation allows that additional support. Um, in the case of Huron, they'd also gone to have some specialty uh, planning staff where they had somebody responsible for climate change or had somebody for forestry conservation. Uh, depending on where the community wants to go and what our priorities are, they have a lot of people with more latitude than just having one planner that they can't possibly keep all those things uh, going if they're doing the way their activities. Uh, so local planning priorities still can be respected. You're having people locally. If you have things like severances and how you want to do uh, zoning, um, having a planner in your community, knowing what your preferences are, they can still help accommodate that, make sure that whether they're reflected in the official plan or in the day-to-day -day decisions on support regarding your local councils. Next slide, please. 
uh, talked a little bit about the uh, junior planners offering a wide range. Um, I just want to bring in uh, a couple of other just key points. Uh, Middlesex County had a very interesting um, planning investment reserve. So something similar to I think what Councillor Sloan was referring to a few minutes ago. Uh, if we were to get a good fall of money, whether it's we sell a parcel of land or we get a compensation for uh, the power bill, uh, what Middlesex had done is they had sold some land several years ago, they had about a $10 million uh, investment reserve. That investment reserve was then offered back to local municipalities to support some of their development activities. So sometimes you're thinking, oh, you know what, I'd really like to have some more water supply in that area, I could, you know, build a couple hundred more houses. Um, they would be allowed to have an interest-free loan for eight years from that reserve. They pay back over eight years, and it's a whole lot less expensive for them to um, have to go talk to them. I just thought it was a very uh, slick way of providing another development fund to do that. Whether that happens here or not, I, I don't know, but I thought it was a great idea and I thought it was worth sharing with you. Uh, the caveat is that local municipalities also have to have at least 10% stake in the game. It's not free. They have to be uh, making the financial commitment as well. Next slide, please. Uh, so I, I think the, one of the this, spirits this of both Carol's presentation and mine is we need to understand from local municipalities through county council what you'd like to see happening on the planning front. There, there's no way that any of those planning models, whatever, should be forced on people. If you see that there's a, a informed decision making or some a, a benefit that you're going to see from having some consolidation, then what we'd like is a direction to your local CAOs and our, our team to work together to say, how does this work? How can we make this sort of come to fruition? Uh, and it, it could be staged. We could have two or three people that are interested in having some planning services because you know we've had challenges with drafting someone to be a director or a manager. Great, we work together. Maybe two or three others. Maybe Elmer says, you know what, we're, we're already a little bit farther ahead. We're prepared to wait a couple of years and we'll reassess what we want to consider that down the road. The model provides for that. There's not a forced mark for everybody wants to sign up. So I think that's another another piece. Um, Lastly, we, we talked a little bit when Carolyn was presenting about the need for collaboration versus um, competition, so, so to say. Uh, Central Elgin, I think we need to acknowledge, has a shared planning service for St. Thomas right now. Um, you know, what does that look like down the road? You know, is there some regional services that we should be thinking about that involve more than just the county? You know, we haven't really talked about that. I, I just think if we're going to do things like an investment of you know a water treatment plant will cost someone in order, order of 250 to 300 million dollars. There's not going to be more than one of those put in the town. Like we all know guarantee that there's going to be something, right? So where is it going to go? How do we coordinate that? Uh, if there's going to be one, I want to make sure that everyone's got a, an opportunity to have a voice at the table and make sure it can meet as many needs as possible. But that would be an example of something that might require some shared consideration, shared planning with a broader group than just out in town. We need to determine that that's what it's like then. Next slide, please. So we, we've asked the question a couple of times. We're not looking for this decision today. You've given us some insight, but we are looking to have local councils come back and give us some indication of where you want to go with your growth, uh, how much you want to invest in your growth, and those other decisions we've got we have to come back and revisit in terms of where we get the money from. And then we need some direction from county, from uh, county council and local municipalities as to where we want to go with our planning services. We could probably have a similar conversation down the road about other types of infrastructure investments. This is not the only one, but I think it's going to be the one that we're going to economic development planning services. It will require some um, decisions in the short term. I think we're going to be able to maximize the opportunities for the growth that's going to be in front of us. Um, so that's why you're getting that uh, full black line. I think that's the last slide. If there's any questions or comments, happy to receive what we can talk. Okay, thank you for that, Don. <clears throat> any thoughts for today or want to touch Dana? You're very glad. There's a lot of things to think about. I'm intrigued with the planning one uh, because uh, you're, you're right, Don. So, how can you have a lot of love? And uh, it seems to me that that is a natural synergy where perhaps we can all benefit from. Just one thought, but still, we have thought about that. I 
want to revisit one item that uh, perhaps we didn't get clear enough direction on, or didn't get any direction at all. That was your application for the bed down direct annually. What are you thinking, Council? Uh, I'm thinking uh, I'm going for it. I uh, would rather, uh, I know oftentimes you got to be careful what you ask for, but in this case, if we're being pursued by growth, we won't just get as far as we have something that it looks like. Yeah, Carolyn has had um, drafts, but like we've got sort of a, a, a skeleton outline of what we'd be looking for. Back with more than that, she's been very busy and very confident to her putting together this sort of a uh, draft application. We can certainly share that with County Council and the CAOs and try and get some feedback from the group. Um, there are categories of support that are in, involved in sort of trying to capture those, but we can, uh, what I suggest is we give Carolyn and the team an opportunity to hone uh, the current information we have based on the comments received today. And within the next one or two weeks or so, we can uh, send that back out to the group and then ask for some feedback with uh, all the local officials and your, your local staff. And then we can try and uh, move ahead to try and make sure that we don't uh, miss the November 7th deadline. Okay, we've got a little bit of time. We have a little bit of time. That's one of the reasons we're before you today. We want to make sure that's the best table. We don't, this is not a forced march, although there is some urgency. Perfect. Is there anything else anyone wants to uh, throw on the table? Okay, this was a good education uh, or session, we should say. Perfect. Thank you to all of uh, our staff who invited to us today. I hope you found it beneficial. I learned a lot, and I'm sure that we'll be talking more at a slower level. So thanks again.